Hello, and welcome to today's live video. So for the more observant among you, you may realize I have glasses on my face today. And this is the first video I'm making wearing my glasses. And this is actually why I'm recording this video today. This is a, this is, I'll be honest, this is a bit of a long story. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my healing journey, a little bit about my process, and I'm gonna be telling you some things today that I don't think I've ever said publicly online. And these, these are some times that I'm gonna share that were really hard for me. So I'm gonna talk about the 18 months that I spent blinded and bedridden in the darkest part of my healing process. I'm gonna to talk to you a bit about how I started my whole coaching business with just a mobile phone, that's it. No laptop, no cameras, just a mobile phone, that's it. And how I moved from England to Portugal working just on a little, little I still have it, a little mobile phone, Samsung Galaxy S7. I'm gonna to talk to you about how I worked on healing my eyes, how I became tolerant of different types of lights, uh, supermarket lights, computer screens, laptops, TV screens. I'm gonna tell you about how I became able to finally tolerate these glasses. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you all of it because this is, this has been a huge part of my healing process. This has taken up like five or six years of my life. It's been a very crazy journey. You know, I'm gonna do my best to recount it to you at least with regards to the eyes. I mean, there's so much I could I could talk for days about it. I'm gonna talk primarily about the, the eye situation. But this, this, I think you'll find this extremely fascinating. And if you have any questions as I'm going through this, please let me know. So, let's do this. So, my my illness wasn't like a, like a click my fingers and get sick. It was like this very, I would say slow, I would say it's quite rapid, this quite rapid decline into poor health. So, to set the scene for you, I'm living in a water damaged building. There is mold everywhere. There is mold in the ceiling, above the kitchen. There is mold all under the bath. All of the, there, there's just mold everywhere. Like I'm, I'm quite sure that there was so much water damage in that building that it was actually structurally unstable. There was so much water damage. There was so much mold. So at this point, we also didn't have we were, we were struggling financially, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not doing anything with my life. I'm just living on benefits, play video games, no social life, nothing. Life's, my life's kind of shit at this time. And we couldn't afford heating. The heating broke. We couldn't afford to get it repaired. And we spent our winter of that, of that, of that year living in the living room with a little gas, a little gas heat. And that's the only room that we could afford to heat. So. I can remember being in my bedroom there, so it's quite an, old, an older building, and it had this like this wallpaper that was like textured. And I can remember I would face the wall and I would breathe onto it, and just the humidity from my from my breath and being in England and being cold, the mold literally began to grow on the wall just from the humidity of my breath. So there's just mold everywhere. Mold was a huge factor for me in, in the development of my illness, and obviously this irritates the mucous membranes. This is this destroys your immune system. Lots of, lots of stuff, okay? Mold is bad for many reasons, but in the context of my eye problem, it really caused a lot of irritation in my eyes, but most importantly, it triggered sort of like a subclinical Shrugens syndrome. So this is like an autoimmune disease where your body is attacking the mucus secreting glands inside your, inside your mucosa. So in your eyes, your mouth, your nose, Anywhere on your body that is wet is a mucosa. And my body was just attacking all of this. So I had gut problems, I had like digestive problems, I had eye problems, I was constipated. Like these are all classic Shrugens syndrome symptoms. And I, I strongly believe the mold was, was really the, the cause of this. So it was triggering all of this, all of this autoimmunity in my body. And on top of that, being exposed to so many mold, so much mold and so many mycotoxins for such a long time, I developed chronic fatigue syndrome. So this was a slow decline of IBS and just like increasing in, increasing food food sensitivities. So it was like cut one thing out, cut another thing out, cut out gluten, cut out dairy, get lactose intolerant, um, start low and going low on the FODMAPs. You know, I'm sure there's many people watching this video that know how this goes. You know, you start reacting to one food, so you cut it, and then your foods get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is all happening at the same time. This is all happening. I also have a so I'm going. I'm basically going over my root causes here. So we've got mold. We've got the, these dietary restrictions. I have a nerve subluxation in my neck. So I had a trampoline accident where I, my, my brother could do a flip on the trampoline and my 
my ego itself would all say, well, if my brother can do it, I can do it and I can do it better. So that was a horrible attitude to have. I really didn't like that part of myself. But I thought, yeah, he can do it, I can do it. So I tried to do a flip, landed on my neck, caused a, caused a problem. I'm sure you all know about the vagus nerve, how it comes out really high in the, in the upper part of your upper cervicals. That was compressed, causes subluxation, that affects digestive function, breathing, heart rate, everything. Your whole autonomic nervous system is basically regulated by a vagus nerve, and I had a, I had a problem there. So what do I do? I go to the doctors, they say, oh, you need some medication, you have IBS. So this was another root cause factor for me. They give me lots of medications, that did not help me at all. Also, you're constipated, here's some fiber, worst thing that, that, that I could ever have done. And throw on top of that, like a poor diet, didn't know about, about nutrition or anything growing up. And plenty, 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 plenty of childhood trauma, adolescent trauma, lots of, lots of different trauma. Trauma everywhere. Everybody has trauma, but I think I had my fair share. I mean, <laughs> everybody that has trauma does. So all of this, and I'm going on this slow decline. So the, for me, when I say I was, I was blinded, technically my ability to see was always present. I was always able to see. The problem I had was, if I used my eyes for any extended period of time, and I'm talking like in, in, the, in the worst days, it was like I had 15 to 20 minutes of eye use per day. If I were to exceed that, I would have this horrendous headache. It would feel like the veins inside my eyes were bulging out of my head. And the way that I felt this was, it literally felt like, imagine that feeling when you have an eyelash in your eye. You know, imagine that feeling and imagine you have that all over your eye and there's nothing in your eye. That is what my existence was like if I used my eyes. It was extremely uncomfortable to the point where all I could do was just lay in bed with my eyes shut because it was so uncomfortable. I, I just, and the only thing that made that sensation go away was laying in my bed with my eyes closed for about three or four hours consecutively. So I just had to lay there and decompress. It turns out from what I know now, this was, this was about, um, tension in the fascia from my, from my neck coming around my eyes, my jaw. So I have ways to manage this, to handle this, to process this. It's way better than it's ever been. Again, I'm going to talk to you about this progression. But during these days, it's like, okay, so I have 30 minutes a day that I'm allowed to use my eyes. And I would use that as wisely as I could. So I would use that to get to and from the toilet. I would use that to eat, to put food into my mouth. And as I said, this was a, this was a, a slow decline. So it wasn't like overnight, I was just 30 minutes. It was like, Six hours, five hours, four hours, three hours, two hours. And through this, I'm like learning more about natural healing. And I'm trying to use the time that I have with my eyes and with the limited amount of energy that I have to do things to help me heal. So I start juicing and I'm making broths and I'm doing gaps and I'm doing all of these different like nutritional protocols and I'm, I'm taking supplements. I'm doing all these things. I'm doing as much research as I can manage, but it just keeps going downhill, downhill, downhill. And it gets to this point where I'm, I'm basically blinded and bedridden and I can spend 30 minutes a day with my eyes open and I'm using this to read one or two pages in a book so I can learn to eat, to feed myself. At this point, I cannot cook or prepare any meals for myself anymore. I am completely like debilitated. I cannot do this. All I can do is the eating part and to get to and from the toilet. That's it. So that was my life for about 18 months. So for about a year and a half, that is all I could do. And I spent the majority of that laying in my bed, listening to audiobooks. So when you hear, oh, he was just laying in bed for 23 and a half hours a day, this was not restful. I was laying there in this constant state of anxiety, of depression, of despair, of like, my, why, is, why is this happening to my body? What can I do to get out of this situation? Why me? What's happening? It's like depression, depersonalization, derealization, all of this overwhelming stuff happening. You know, being exposed to mycotoxins, these are extremely toxic to the body and it's causing nutritional deficiencies and liver overwhelm and it was, it was a hot, it, my life was just awful at that time. It was, it was crazy. So this slow decline into this point and I start figuring things, some things out. So we move house, we get out of the mold into a temporary accommodation. We move from the temporary accommodation into another house that also has mold there. Fantastic. But it was less, it was more manageable. It was not remediated properly. It was basically my dad smashing out, smashing out with a sledgehammer. But we didn't, we didn't know, you know, you do the best you can with what, you, with what you've got at the time. You know, we didn't know. And even if we knew about all of the proper remediation, we didn't have any money. You know, we didn't have any money to do any of this stuff. So we just did the best we could with what we had. So this looked like lining the floors with plastic to stop the, the, so basically got like a big tarp and just covered it to try and stop the mycotoxins from flowing through the house. Yeah, it was not, not great. 
So I'm starting to do these things. At this point, I've restricted my diet down to literally like six foods. So at this point, I can eat boiled beef, boiled salmon, boiled egg yolks and raw egg yolks. That's one food, even though you cooked it two ways. When you're on such a limited diet, being able to have one food but cook two different ways is a big deal. That's one food, but there's two different preparations of that. Um, also, beef protein powder, which I... At this point, I was struggling with uh, severe gastritis, and I couldn't... The sensation of my stomach stretching was unbearable. It would ruin my motility. It was... I couldn't do this. So, at this point, I was drinking these, like, really potently, like, fatty shakes. So, it was, like like 50 grams of coconut oil, a tiny bit of well-filled kale juice, blended together, and then I would eat the protein powder with the spoon. And this wasn't like a nice, nice tasting, like vanilla, chocolate, salted caramel. This is like, it tastes like beef, you know? I'm eating like a beef protein powder, and I'm drinking these, these, these things. So my other foods were olive oil, coconut oil, and well-filled kale juice. So that, that that's where I'm at at this time. I'm completely restricted. This is all I can do. These are the only foods I can tolerate. I've eliminated everything else. I'm doing a salt flush with a followed by a coffee enema every three days. So I'm basically drinking two tablespoons of sea salt with water because it was the only way I could make my bowels move. Follow that up with three liters of water to rehydrate and then a coffee enema. At this point, the autoimmune element was beginning to calm itself down. So the Shrodgen syndrome, the dryness in the eyes was improving. And I kind of accidentally came across this miraculous resolution of, of, of some of the symptoms in my eyes. So I went to, to work with a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. She did acupuncture. She did acupuncture in my, in my face, in my neck, in my back. And for the first time, my 25 to 30 minutes of eye use increased to about 45 minutes. And I was like, okay, this is something. This is, this is progress. There's something going on here. Didn't know why, didn't understand why at the time. It was like, okay, some, the results speak for themselves. This is something. And at this time, I'm also working with a, a chiropractor who I've been seeing regularly because I know, oh, I had a nerve subluxation. I would always watch this, uh, this YouTube channel named Dr. Bergman, and he would always talk about how correct nerve supply is essential for the body to heal itself. He'd always say, the body is self-healing and self-regulating, and if there's something keeping you sick, then there's something stopping your body from self-healing and self-regulating. And if your nervous system is messed up and your body can't communicate to itself, well, that's really, really bad. So I started seeing him and I was seeing him regularly. And since then, I'll say I, I've been doing regular chiropractic, osteopathic and physiotherapy care since then. So this is like seven years of doing this and I go basically once a week. I still do this to this day. So my body still needs this, this currently. So that, that's just something that I think a lot of people think, oh, wow, that's, that's a long time. You know, I would expect you to have fixed everything by now. It's like, well, everything's way better, but it's still a work in progress. You know, there's layers to this onion that you have to peel. So in one of the sessions, we tried using a technique called dry needling. So this is where you're using acupuncture needles, but you're not using it through the traditional Chinese medicine perspective of trying to allow the chi to move around the body and you're using it from a, like an energetic or meridian perspective. Instead, you're trying to find trigger points. So these are like contracted muscles of, of bunches of, of fascia inside your in, your, in your, in your muscles. So your muscles are supposed to be like this, your muscle fibers. And they're supposed to be able to like slide past each other. But what happens in a trigger point is they get all kind of like gnarled up and they don't work properly. And basically what it turns out happened is I had a, an, a massive trigger point in my suboccipital muscle, which is the muscle that so if you if you put your hands on the back of your head and, and feel down, you'll feel you go over like this bone ridge and then it gets a bit squidgy. That's your suboccipital muscle. And I had a trigger point. I had actually several trigger points here and in my in my traps as well. And he used a dry needling technique and it released these trigger points. And after that, I was able to use my eyes for about two hours without developing these awful symptoms. And it was like, after that, it was like, every, like it's like a new world, you know? If you go from literally, so try and imagine this. Try and imagine you have been stuck in your bed, unable to do anything because you're in such discomfort, such pain for 18 months, a year and a half. Can you even imagine what a year and a half of time is like? Now imagine that just stuck in your bed. 
And all you do all day is listen to audiobooks so you can escape into another world, or you listen to medical journals so you can try and figure out your health problem. Like, that was my life, and that's all I did. And then to have two hours, it was like, wow. And I, for the first time, I was like, I can go for a little walk. I can go outside. Like, I'd move house, and I didn't even know what the house looked like, because I just, it wasn't... At that time, when you're in that kind of level of survival, it just was not important. I did not care. I had more important things to worry about. So I've moved house. I don't even know where I live. I don't even know what it looks like. If you, if I, if someone dropped me five minutes down the road, I would not have even been able to find my house because I'd never even seen it. And I lived in this really beautiful place. It was like there was this really nice nature path and a lake and I'd never seen it. And the next big breakthrough for me came through when well, after this, after finding this with this this needle in the in the back of my neck, I was like, "This is the game changer," you know. And it was expensive to go to the TCM practitioner and get the acupuncture. It was like twenty five pounds a session, which I mean, to me now, that's that's not that's not very much money. That's quite reasonable. But back then, that was like a huge portion of what I had available. And I was thinking, well, she's just sticking needles in me. I can do that, you know. So I just I was like, okay, whatever. I just bought a pack of needles on the internet. And just started playing with them. I just started sticking them into myself and seeing what would happen. Because <laughs> I thought, well, I can't afford to go and do this session, but I can buy a pack of needles for one fifth the price, and I get a hundred needles. So let's just try it. So I started doing them in my in my face because obviously this was a this was really where I was trying to look for improvements, and it was it was it was really helpful. I managed to maintain that two hours of eye use in a day, even without going to have this TCM practitioner, this acupuncture. Or getting like these needles in my neck every single week. I still went for the chiropractic care, and I still did have needles when I needed them. But I was also managing this at home, and I was doing this every single day. So every single day before I go to bed, I would do these needles, and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, what are the limits here? You know, how how can I use these needles to get the most benefit? So I started doing some research because obviously, when you're poking needles into your face, you're thinking, okay, what if I do some serious damage? You know, what if I poke this into my brain? What if I destroyed my nerves that come out the back of my eye you know it's like you're sticking needles in your face you have to be careful you have to know what you're doing so i was doing some research and i looked and found sort of like a, an, an anatomy map of the of the of the human skull and i saw that there's basically like there's no way you can poke your brain unless you literally go straight through your eyes your brain's pretty safe you know you've got this big protective skull around it so i was like okay let's try it and I tried sticking the needles in this part of my head here. And instead of just just, just t- tapping it in, I stuck it in about an inch. Because I saw there were these big muscles here. So I stuck it in about an inch on each side. And that is what changed everything for me. After that point, I was able to fairly reliably use my eyes as much as I needed to in a day without problems. As long as I did it, the acupuncture every single day. So for about... I'd say that this this period of my time of my life was probably about two years. So for about two years, I did acupuncture, maybe even longer actually, maybe more like three years. I did acupuncture in my face every single day without fail. And if I failed, all of those symptoms came back. The stabbing sensation in the eyes, the, the headaches, everything just came back. So I was doing this almost without fail every single day. And it kept the symptoms at bay. I was like, cool, this is awesome. And yes, like, because obviously I'm not, I'm not an acupuncturist, so I would get bruises on my face and it wouldn't look very professional and it would look a bit of a mess. And I like, it's actually very funny. Um, in my passport photo, you can see I, I have a big bruise on my face just here because, well, I've been using the acupuncture needles and it went wrong and sometimes it bruises, you know, that's, that's what happens sometimes, especially if you're doing it every single day, you know, it's going to happen occasionally. So my passport photo, I look like an absolute criminal, you know, hair is a mess. Super scruffy, really thin and gaunt, look like a drug addict. I've got bruises all over my face. It's quite funny. It's quite funny. Huh? <laughs> so this this really started to change everything. And at this point, I was like, okay, let's see where the new rules are. Let's see where my new limit is. So I got a mobile phone. Because at this point, I'd basically been using a small, I think they were called a HTC. It's such an ancient phone. You know, like one of the most, the first generation touchscreens. And all I basically used it to was, used it for was to listen to audiobooks. So my dad would download them onto an SD card and stick them on the phone and I'd listen to like Game of Thrones or I listened to so much different stuff. And I got I got a, a phone and and I was tolerating it and it was and it was okay. I started with a little I think it was called an Alcatel 7. It was I didn't want to want to get an expensive one because I didn't even know if it would if it would if I'd be able to tolerate, you know, if it would work. So 
got a little one and it was it was okay you know I was playing Clash of Clans and I was I could I could do it and even at some points what it would make my eyes start to hurt from the tension I'd just stick some needles in even in the middle of the day and I'd be okay so that was amazing and I I thought okay well let's try a better phone and I tried a better phone and it worked it was an S7 and I think one of the reasons that it worked was it was a, a an OLED an organic organic light emitting diode and I think that's quite important. And it was a very high resolution as well. And I tolerated it. But I tried lots of other phones. They didn't work. I tried TV screen or a, commu a computer monitor. I could not tolerate them. They would trigger like horrible headaches, reactions, really nasty stuff in my eyes. Just couldn't tolerate it. Even going into supermarkets, the fluorescent lighting and stuff like that, couldn't tolerate it. So I, I was really happy, you know, I could play again, you know. So I used to play all my little games on my phone. And instead of having to just lay in bed with my eyes closed... It's like, yeah, I still had chronic fatigue. I still didn't have very much energy, but I could play, I could play mobile games. You know, this was a huge improvement in my quality of life. As stressful as my life was before, I didn't really have a coping mechanism and now I did. So I could handle it a little bit better. Also, this opened my ability to research and to educate myself. I could find my own YouTube videos. I could do, I could do things again. You know, I had so much more independence and so much more ability to learn and educate myself. So I start doing this, you know, I'm educating myself more, I'm learning. And it gets to the point where I've really started healing so much. You know, things are starting to change. My chronic fatigue is getting better. Yeah, I still don't have like heaps and heaps of it, but I'm not bedridden anymore. I can go out for two walks in a day. And I'm like, I have to share this. You know, I have just been through a year and a half of an absolute nightmare. And I asked anybody that I could for help and nobody could help me. And now I have something that I... I've had results and it's been through doing this gut stuff and this acupuncture stuff and all of these different things and I'm like, I have to share this. So that's when I started working. And this initially started with me writing a little book. I still have it. It's called Bite Me, the Controversial Weight Loss uh, Manual. I still have that book. It's my first thing I ever wrote. Wrote it out on paper again because the screens were still a bit hard for me. So I wrote it out on paper. My dad transcribed it for me into text in the computer. First thing I ever made. And then my first brand was born, that's Health Potion. Maybe if you've been following me for a really long time, you still remember when I was doing the Health Potion brand. And we started like the Health Potion Academy and we did, we did loads of stuff in, under that brand. And that's where all of that really started. And I started doing videos and it was just recording. So it, I've basically gone back to my roots. It was basically me sitting in front of a camera and just recording and talking about like random stuff. And what are we doing today? Just here sitting in front of my phone on my, in my camera, just uh, talking about random stuff. And yeah, that, that grew into a business. I started helping people and people were like, wow, your videos are really good. Can you help me fix this problem? Yeah, sure, I can do that. I can help you with that. I can help you figure that problem out. Oh, I know about this. And I helped people solve problems that I hadn't even solved myself yet. You know, I helped people heal histamine intolerance when I still had histamine intolerance. I helped people heal several food sensitivities when I still had food sensitivities. You know, I, I helped people with a lot of things that I hadn't even figured out for my, how I figured them out, but knowing how to do something and then allowing your body the time that it needs to do the thing. They're two different things, you know? So I knew it, I knew how to do it in my head, but I, my body needed time to catch up and there were people that weren't as sick as me that could 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 heal faster. So it was quite ironic to be helping people when I'm still sicker than they are. But yeah, that's where I was. Like when you work with somebody, do you want somebody that has been less sick than you or more sick than you? You want someone that's been more sick than you because they know what it's like to be in a really bad place. And they must get it on a deeper level. If they got out of it, they could going to be able to help you. So, so yeah, started the brand, started using my, my phone. Since then, I tried like several phone upgrades. I could never tolerate it. I had tried glasses in the past and it would always cause me like massive headaches and I could, I could never do it. And it was like, okay, well, this just isn't the time. Don't know what the answer to this is. But let's see what it is. So fast forward a, a little while into the future. So. Big, big context change. So not living in England with my dad and my brother anymore, living in Portugal with my lovely fiance, Joanna, and things really start changing, you know? I'm working, so I've been, up until that point, I've been doing loads of therapy, like as much as I could afford. And now I moved over here, I'm doing more therapy of different types and working on the deeper levels of healing, which I see as being the, so you've got like the physical level, which is like structural, which is, food sensitivities, which is gut flora. But then you've got like the mindset. And when I say mindset, I don't just mean think positive. It's bullshit. 
fuck whoever says think positive. You have no idea what you're talking about with healing. It's so much more complicated than that. It's so much more nuanced than that. Yes, you have to be positive, but not in a repressive way. It has to be genuine positivity. So it's working on that. It's working on that emotional layer, doing different types of things, figuring out where I fit into the world. Who am I? Uh, what do I have to offer? How do I fit into my family? What does this family dynamic mean? How does this family dynamic connect to my dynamic that I have with food, with my body, with all of these different things? And as these things start, start to change, as I started to be, become more tolerant of how I saw the world, my, my level of tolerance with my eyes, like, actually also began to change. So the eye symptoms were physical manifestations of my metaphysical intolerance of how I perceived things. I was very judgmental, very rigid. Has to be this way. This is right, this is wrong. This is black, this is white. There's only one way to do it. And that's not true. The, the new perspective, and I'm trying to embody this more and more, is life is different for everybody and everybody just has a different hierarchy of values. Some things are more important to certain people than other things. And just because one thing is more important than another thing to me doesn't mean it's the same for another person. And being able to see the world through this lens instead of I'm right, you're wrong, it's okay, you value different things than I do, that changed everything. And as I've been doing this, I started to be able to tolerate different things. So I was able to upgrade my phone into a, I went to a Huawei a P20. And I was like, cool, I can I change my phone now, that's amazing. Tried to get a tablet and it didn't work couldn't tolerate it. And it was ultra HD, it cost like 2000 euros, couldn't, couldn't do it, sent it back. And didn't stress about it too much. Just thought, okay, it's not the right time. And then one day it came around, it was like, okay, it would be really cool if, so my business is growing, it's huge now, I can't, you can't just do this on my phone anymore, it's just not realistic. I wanna do email marketing, if you've ever tried to run a business purely on a phone, like it's something that if you've never actually tried to do, you can never imagine how hard it is. There's so many technical things that you need to do that doing on a phone is just is it's, it's possible. It's just a it's a nightmare. It's horrible. You know the resolution and copy and paste and swap tabs. You know it it's just it's so hard. So I was like, I really could do with a laptop. So I got a laptop. I didn't, I was like, maybe I'm not going to react, I'm not going to tolerate it very well. Maybe I'll react to it. So I'm going to just get quite a cheap one, you know? So I just got like a six or 700 euro laptop. And I was like, I'm just going to use it for a small amount of time. I'll just use it for 30 minutes just to do my email marketing and that's all. So if you ever receive uh, emails from me, well, now you know how. It's from a, from a, from a laptop now, not from my phone. So I, I said, I do the emails, I do all that stuff. And it slowly, I was like, okay, I tolerate this. It, initially, it made my eyes a bit annoyed, but it was like, okay, my eyes kind of adapted a little bit. It was like, okay. And now I can do, before it was used to just be a little bit of work on that. Now I can do loads of work. I can take calls on there if I want. I can play video games. I can do, I can do it. I can use a laptop like a normal person. And I was like, wow, okay, this is amazing. And then go about five or six months forward from that. And I was like, I think I should try some glasses. I really think now is the right time. And I could, I could really see that, although I wasn't conscious of it at the time, I didn't want to rely on other things. I didn't want to receive the love of other things. I didn't want other things to take care of me. And that's exactly what glasses do, if you think about it. You know, I don't have to strain so hard to see. They, they love me. They're giving me love. I can perceive the world in a different way. And... It's an amazing thing to see. And maybe I'm saying this and you just think, what the hell is he talking about? Honestly, this is something you have to experience. You know, it's a really hard thing to describe. But I wanted to be independent because any time I'd been dependent in the past, bad things happened to me. So I learned that being dependent on other things, asking for help, receiving support was dangerous. So don't do it. So I didn't. And everything that perceived, that could have helped me, anything that could have supported me, my body saw as dangerous and reacted to it accordingly. Whereas now, I've built this trust. I've built this relationship with my body. I've helped it understand. I've helped it understand and it has helped me understand where we have differences in communications. It's helped me understand what my hierarchy of values is and how other people's value systems are different and that's okay. That doesn't mean mine's better than theirs. It's just a different way of doing it. And I tried the glasses and I tolerate them. And I didn't think I would. I honestly thought, I'm going to try them. I'm going to get horrible headaches. It'll be two weeks of this, and then I'll go back to the opticians and say, look, they're not working. I put them on. It felt amazing. I've been wearing them ever since. It feels fine. 
It's been like a week now. I'm still not fully adjusted. When I look at things, like the phone that I'm looking at doesn't look like this. It looks like, like this. <laughs> not, not that, not that extreme, but it's slightly tilted. And when I'm trying to walk, obviously my eyes are like, where's the floor? So I haven't fully adjusted, but that's normal. You know, this is a normal reaction to needing glasses and having glasses. And I tolerate them now. So I don't have to do the acupuncture anymore. I don't do the needles. At, I don't really need to do them at all. When I was going through this adjustment, I did them a few times. This is, this is probably not because of the glasses, but because I was traveling and had a lot of other stress and wasn't sleeping very well. So it was causing tension to build up. I don't think I needed it, but I thought, okay, well, I have this tool. I know it helps me. I'm going to use it when I need it. So I used it two or three times. I did acupuncture in my face two or three times. Haven't done it since. I don't think I need it. Excuse me. <coughs> and here we are. So I can now use my eyes as much as I want. I still have a sensation of discomfort or of tension around my face. I have no doubt this is going to fade as my eyes adjust to using these glasses. I'm used to being like this my whole life, you know, just straining to see, looking for threats, looking for, looking for danger, not wanting to feel safe or not having associated feeling safe with, with vulnerability, which is dangerous. And now I can let that go or I'm learning to let that go and I'm feeling safer and I'm feeling like it's safe for me to feel my emotions and that it's safe for me to live in this world and that the things that actually are there to love me and take care of me are actually there to do that not to use love and support as a manipulative mechanism to hurt me in some way or to to be dangerous and I can see that and I'm receiving that support and that is what these glasses are. These glasses are, these glasses are love, these glasses are support, these glasses are giving me a new way to see the world and I can really see that and it's really cool. So, bit of a roller coaster, bit of a, bit of a crazy journey that I've been on. Don't know if you thought this is where this video was going to go, but that's everything for today. So, I had somebody recently ask me, why don't you have any videos about, about your past, about your healing process? And I thought, that's a good question. I probably should. I didn't realize that I didn't. So I'm going to maybe do a, a series of these where I just talk about a few of the different health problems I've had, how I went through them, what, how it played out, how I resolved them and the lessons that I learned from them. So I hope you found this, this live very interesting. I hope you found this video very interesting. If you do have any questions, let me know. If any part of my journey is inspiring or insightful or you have questions about it, like, let me know. I, I'm not just sitting here sharing this like for fun. I mean, I'm, I'm actually enjoying myself quite a lot, I'll be honest. But I'm taking time out of my day to share this to actually try and help you in your own healing process. So if this is helpful, it would be really nice for you to just let me know that because I really do appreciate it. So... Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if this is inspiring and this is helpful, if this is insightful. Or if, again, if you do have any questions, just, just let me know. So that's everything. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, I missed the finish button. Bye-bye for real now.